Hello, good day. Let's go now to our next topic, which is on the grouped data. When the data collected is vast, the presentation of data becomes complicated. Thus, the natural thing to do is to bundle them into groups. First, when we discuss group data, you must learn how to create an FDT or a frequency distribution table. Here we are going to bundle the data into groups called the class intervals. So we have this frequency distribution table. It has the class interval, the tally, the frequency, class mark, class boundaries, less than cumulative frequency, and greater than cumulative frequency. We also have the percent relative frequency. Now in creating an FDT, if you go to the internet or Google or YouTube, you can see more than two steps on creating a, an FDT distribution table. Now in our case, I will just give you the class intervals and the frequency. All we need to do is to fill in the class marks, class boundaries, the less than CF, the greater than CF, and the percent relative frequency. Okay, now let's consider this. So this is from the book, page 106 to 113. So later we have we'll have a uh, graphing with regards to this FDT. Okay, so now we're given here with the class interval and the tally frequency and so on. Now in this case, uh, in our case, the class interval and the frequency are already given. So again, all you need to do is to fill in these other four or five components. Now, class marks. What is a class mark? Class mark is the midpoint of your upper and upper and lower class interval. So in this case, to solve for 103, this is just from 99. Okay, so this is 99 plus 107 divided by 2. So this is 206 over 2 which is equal to 103. Now if you solve for this one again for the second row 108 plus 116 divided by 2 the result is 224 divided by 2 which is 112. Similarly you will have 121, 130, 139 and so on. This is just by getting the midpoint of the lower limit and the upper limit. Now for the shortcut, all you need to do is to solve for the first class mark and then get the class width. Now to compute for the class width, you just have to choose any two consecutive lower limit and then subtract. So in this case, 108 okay, we have the plus width is equal to 108 minus 99 which is equal to 9 so meaning the plus width of each interval is 9 so this will help us to easily complete the class mark column so from 103 we add 9 this is 112 plus 9 121 plus 9, 130 plus 9, 139 plus 9, 148 plus 9, 157 plus 9, 166 plus 9, 175 plus 9, 184 and plus 9, 193. So that is the shortcut for class mark. So again, you have two choices. First is to compute for the midpoint using this. Solve for the midpoint for each row. Or, the second one is solve for the class width, and then you add the class width from the first class mark. Okay, so that is class mark, the class mark, the midpoint. Now, for the class boundaries, uh, if we're given with a whole number, a data with whole number, for the left side or the lower limit, we always deduct or minus, subtract point 0.5, and on the right side, upper limit, we add point 0.5 okay 
So in this case, in order for us to easily uh, write the class boundaries or the upper class boundaries, we just need to copy this, all of this, on the right side, which is this portion. Okay. And then, you just add 0.5. Okay, as a shortcut. You just add 0.5. Okay, so that is why we have this boundaries for the upper class boundaries. Now, for the lower class boundaries, you may uh, do the minus 0.5 or if you notice, these two are equal. So, you just copy the upper limit of the previous row. Okay, so just do this. Okay, that's why they are called boundaries because both of the endpoints, the upper limit and the lower limit of the preceding interval are the same. They share the same boundaries. Next, we have the less than cumulative frequency. So the shortcut for this one is we'll start at the lowest class interval. The frequency is 6. So meaning there are 6 data which falls below or equal to 107 less than or equal to 107 so there are six next is nine we have nine because there are six plus three data that falls less than or equal to 116 so it includes the data from 100 from 99 to 107 because the data there are also less than 116 that is why we have 6 plus 3 equals 9 okay so that's actually our shortcut we'll just add you no know, that's why it's called cumulative so we'll just add the frequency okay so again we have 6 the first one then plus 3 we have 9 plus 2 we have 11 plus 3 14 plus 5 19 plus 6 25 plus 3, 28, plus 7, 35, plus 7, 42, plus 2, 44, and plus 6, we have 50. The end one must be equal to the total number of data or observation. Now for the greater than cumulative frequency, we have, we'll start at the highest. We have 118 into 107, so we'll start with 6. Okay, and then we'll add going up. We have 6 plus 2, 8 plus 7, 15 plus 7, 22, <coughs> excuse me, plus 3, 25, plus 6, 31, plus 5, 36, plus 3, 39, and so on until you reach again the number of data which is 50. Okay, and the last one for the person, you'll just have to divide the frequency over the last and then multiply it by 100. Say, for example, for the first one, 6 divided by 50 times 100%. So using your calculator, you will arrive with 12. Next, we have 3 divided by 50 times 100. You will arrive with 6%. Continuing that manner, this one, then of course you will arrive with these numerical values. So therefore, this is now our complete frequency distribution table. So you must know how to construct this FDT because later on you will be asked to compute for the mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, and measures of other locations for the group data. Okay, so this is an example of a graph of the frequency distribution table. So this is called a frequency histogram. So when we talk about histogram, it is frequency versus the class boundaries. So the class boundaries is written here or are written here at the x-axis. Okay, they share the same boundaries. That's why they are close or attached to each other, each other. For the line graph, we have this frequency on the y-axis and class marks on the x-axis. Now, by the way, for the uh, bar graph, 
it's just like this but it's frequency and then at the bottom is the class interval so in that way since the, it's the class interval so they are not attached or they are not side by side with each other so there is a space you can look at your book on this in this chapter now let's go to measures of central tendency now we'll be discussing two types first one is for the ungrouped data and second for the group data when we say ungrouped data meaning we're using the raw data itself and for the group data we'll be using of course the fdt that is why you must know how to complete the table Okay, when we say measures of central tendency, we also uh, call them as the measures of center. So they are usually called the averages. Okay, so the three commonly used measures of centers are the mean, the median, and the mode. So let's start first with the ungrouped data. So the mean, it's just the average, meaning we'll just add the number or the data itself and then divide by the number of data so for the properties it may not be an actual value in the data set say for example if you have one four and five if you add this three okay if you get the, the mean this is 10 over 3 which is 3.33 so 3.33 is not on the given data. So that is why it may not be an actual observation in the data set. Of course, it is easy to compute. Every observation contributes to the value because all of them are involved in the computation. That is why every observation contributes to the value of the mean. And it is easily affected by the extreme value. Say, for example, I will change four, uh, 5 to 100. Okay, so this is now 105 over 3, which is equal to 35. So look at the difference. Okay, differentiate the, the two means. We can say that the mean is really easily affected, affected by extreme values. So we have these examples. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So you, if we add them and then divide by 5, since there are 5 of them, will get 6. For letter B, 18 plus 29 plus 22 plus 32 plus 15. Divide by 5 again because there are only 5. Then we'll get 23.2. Okay, for the mean, do not round off to a whole number. Okay, when we say mean, it's an average, so it can have a decimal point, decimal number. Okay, it's a decimal number. It's not a whole number when we talk about the mean because it's an average. So with this, we have Jeffrey has been working on programming and updating a website for his company for the past 24 months. The following number of hours Jeffrey has worked on his website for each of the past 7 months are 24, 25, 31, 50, 53, 66, and 70. What is the mean number of hours that Jeffrey worked on his website? Okay, so all we need to do is, of course, to add this data. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are 7. So add them and then divide by 7. So we have 46.71. So on the average, he worked for 46.71 hours per month. Okay, so I hope it's clear that when we talk about mean, it's just the average. Or mean. Okay, the median. When we talk about the median, it's just the middle value, okay, the middle value. So in that case, when we talk about the middle value, we must arrange the data itself, either increasing or decreasing order. And take note that if the number of the observation is odd, then we have exactly one middle value. But if it is even, then we will take the average of the two middle values. Okay, so again, for the properties, may not be an actual observation in the data set. So I'll have an example later. And it's positional, so it cannot be affected by extreme values. So let's go to the example. So 
So for letter A, we find the median. So we're given with this. First is to arrange. So we have this arrangement. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's odd. So meaning we have only one middle value. And it is located at the fourth place. So if it's odd actually, so you'll just... Uh, the number of data, if it's odd, okay, the number of data plus 1 over 2. So that is the location of your middle value. So in this case, 7 plus 1 over 2 is 8 over 2, which is equal to 4. So meaning the fourth value, so 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why we have 9. Letter B, we have this value, and then we arrange this one. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6. Okay, 6. So for the even, you'll just take the average. Okay, for the n over 2 value plus the n plus 1, uh, n over 2 plus 1 value divided by 2. So the n over 2 value is 6 divided by 2, 3. So the third one, which is 77. Next, 3 plus 1 is 4. So the fourth value, which is 89. 89 over 2 is 83. Actually, there's no need to have this computation. So it's just for formality's sake. But I'm sure you know how to locate the middle value. So the point is, according to our previous slide, if the number of data is odd, then of course we have exactly one median. For the number of data which is even, we cannot directly say that we have the exact value from your data. But of course we need to take the average of the two middle values. Okay, So this example number one illustrates that the median may not be the a data itself. So look at this. 9 is in the data, but for letter B, 83 is not on the given data. So that is why we have this first property. May not be an actual observation in the data set. Now, number 2, the median of the ranked list. We have this, 3, 4, 7, 11, 17, 29, 37 is 11. So this is the median. If the maximum value is 37, increase to 55. So meaning, let's have this. 55, so it becomes an extreme value compared to the other numbers. Does it have an effect? No, because it's just positional. That is why we have this. It may not be affected by extreme values. Because again, me median is just a positional measure. Okay, so we have some more examples. Find the median for the data in the following lists. So we have this, and then arrange. And then you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are 7. So we have, this is odd, so we have an exactly one uh, median from the data itself. So this is 50 in this case. Letter B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6. So the middle values are in the third and fourth. So which is 107 and 111. Letter C, we have this, and then arrange. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, so 8, so we have 4 and 4th and 5th position, so 12.5. And last for letter D, we have this, the third one, because it's up. Now, most of the students will or get wrong on this uh, topic, median, because first of all, they do not arrange. Okay, they do not arrange the data itself. So please remember that when we're talking about median, it's positional, so you need to arrange the data. Last for the measures of center is the mode. So mode is the most frequent. No? So the value with the greatest frequency. So the mode may not exist, and even if, does, if it does exist, it may not be unique. So a distribution having only one mode is called unique modal okay for example for this one uh, for number letter a we have okay 
15 and 21 appeared more than once but 21 appear appears only twice but 15 appears thrice that is why the answer is 15 for letter b all of them appears once only so we have no mode okay by the way letter a is unimodal because we only have one mode for letter c we have three because it appears five times compared to the other number so it's three so it's unimodal and for letter d we have this 12 and 71 appears twice so we can say that we have two modes for letter d remember if it exists it may not be unique so it may be more than one mode now let's go to the group data now for the group data i repeat i will always repeat that you must know how to complete the table because in your exam i will just only give you the class interval and the frequency so if your fdt finished fdt is wrong then of course somehow your computation for the mean median and mode is also wrong so please let's consider this table so we only need this part in order for us to solve for the mean median and mode for the group data now for the mean if you notice this is our equation it involves the frequency and the class marks so what if your class marks are wrong during exam then of course your mean is automatically wrong okay going back how do we compute for the mean all you need to do is you multiply first each class marks and the frequency and then add now in this case we have 1 times 7 plus 4 times 12 plus 6 times 17 plus 4 times 22 plus 2 times 27 plus 3 times 32 and then divide by the total number of data which is 20 so if you use your calculator it's 19.75 okay so we'll have this so again in this one we have 6 times 103 3 times 112 2 times 121 and so on until 6 times 193 divided by 50 so the mean for this is 151.06 again it's a mean so do not round off to a whole number last for the mean so we have this again the frequency and class marks 2 times 52, 4 times 57, 5 times 62, until 5 times 77. You add them, and the result is 67. You add and then divide by the total number of data, which is 35. Again, for the mean, for the group data, you need the class marks and the frequency. Now, let's go to the median. For the median, we have this formula where LM is the lower class boundary of the median class, W is the class width, N is the number of data, CB, CFB, cumulative frequency before the median class, and FM, frequency of the median class. So meaning, in order for us to solve this, we must first find the median class. Now, how do we find the median class? Of course, we need first to locate our N over 2. Okay, after locating your n over 2, you will look at the CF and then choose the nearest CF which is greater than or equal to n over 2. So in short, this one is less than. So n over 2 must be less than or equal to the CF. So let's have an example to understand this further. So for this particular example, so our n is 20, so 20 divided by 2 is 10. So after finding your n over 2, I told you to look at your cf, and which is the nearest cf, which is greater than 10, and the nearest is 11. So our cf here is 11. So meaning this is now our median class.
Okay, so this is now our median class. Okay, now let's substitute LM, lower class boundary of the median class. We have 14.5. Check. The class width, of course, I told you to just choose two consecutive lower. So 10 minus 5 is 5. N over 2 is just 20 over 2. And CB or CFB is the cumulative frequency before. So before 11, we have 5. So that is why we have minus 5. And then divided by the frequency of your class, median class, which is 6. So input this on your calculator, and you will have the median as 18.67. Okay, so for those who has a calculator that is not that high tech, uh, you can do the solving from right to left. Okay, so that's from right to left. Let's go to another example. So we have this. So in this case, we have 50. 50 over 2 is 25. So, again, look at the CF. Okay, we have this 25, which is less than or equal to 25. So, therefore, this is our class, our median class. Okay, so that, that is, our, or this is our median class. And now, we're ready for substitution. Lower class boundary, LM, which is 143.5, plus the class width, 108 minus 99 is 9. And then 50 over 2, which is 25 minus before, the cumulative frequency before, which is 19. And divided by the frequency of the median class, which is again 6. And then input in your calculator, the result is 152.5. Last example for the median. So in this case, we have 35 divided by 2, 17.5, correct. So the 17.5 is less than or equal to 21. Okay, the nearest is 21. So that is why this is our median class. So we're now ready to substitute 64.5 as our lower class boundary of the median class. Our class width is 55 minus 50 is 5. Then again, we have 35 divided by 2 minus the previous cumulative frequency, which is 11. And then the frequency of the median class, which is 10. Using your calculator, you will arrive at 67.75. So all you need to do is to familiarize or memorize the formula of the median Okay, last is the mode. Okay, we have this formula for the mode. L is again the lower class boundary of the modal class. W is the width. And if you notice, it's all small f, so we will concentrate on the frequency column. Okay, if it's fm, it's the modal class frequency. If it's minus 1, meaning it's before. And if it's m, f, m plus 1, it's after the modal class. Now the question is, what is our modal class? Uh, when we talk about mode, it means it's the most frequent. So when we talk about mode in group data, our basis is the highest or the class interval with the highest frequency. So in this case, the highest frequency is 6. So therefore, it's our modal class. So this is our modal class. Okay, after finding the modal class, substitute. Lower class boundary, we have 14.5. The class width is 10 minus 5, which is 5. And then for FM, okay, for FM, frequency of the modal class, so we have 6 minus the FM minus 1, so before, so before 6, we have four and then at the new denominator we have two times fm which is six 
minus frequency before which is 4 and then frequency after which is again 4 so that is why we have this so use your calculator so yeah, the result is 17 so the modal the mode is 17 again the same with median if you cannot use a high tech calculator then of course you do you go from right to left Okay, how about this one? What is the modal class? Of course, there are two sevens. Of course, we will compute for two modal or mode two mode. So first, let's start first with this first seven. Okay, so the lower class boundary is one sixty one point five plus okay one hundred eight minus ninety nine is nine. So that's the class width. The frequency of the class interval or the modal class is 7 the frequency before which is this so 3 and then at the denominator we have 2 times the frequency which is 7 minus 3 this is 3 because before frequency before fm plus 1 is the frequency after which is again 7 okay using your calculator we have 170.5 Okay, if, let's compute for the other one. We have two modes. So the other seven, we have this. The lower class boundary this time is 117.5 minus 170, uh, minus, uh, 170.5 plus the class width again is 9 plus 7 minus the frequency before, which is 7, divided by 2 times the current frequency of the modal class, which is 7. Minus the frequency before, minus the frequency after. But just looking at this, this is 0. So all in all, this is 0, which is 170.5. So in this particular problem, the first computation and the second computation is the same, which is 170.5. But this is not all the, always the case. So in other problems, it may be that the other mode is different from the first mode. Okay, and last, okay, so of course this time we have only one mode because we have only one highest frequency which is 10, so that is our modal class. So lower class boundary, 64.5 plus the width, 55 minus 50, which is 5, and then we have FM, the frequency, which is 10, frequency before is minus 5 divided by 2 times the frequency minus the frequency before minus the frequency after using your calculator you will get 68.67